Hey everyone, welcome to this video. I just want to update you on uh, the look development of the yesterday's tutorial because there's some improvements to be made. And also, thank you very much for subscribing. I had so many subscribers since the last video and we are almost reaching a thousand. So I didn't expect it's going to come that far. So thank you very much and let's get to it. So we're going to look some speed improvements and look improvements. You could see me using XP shutter and then making it editable by pressing C and and dividing it into all these separate objects. But to make it procedural, you can just put the XP shutter into XP join and then apply uh, apply the collide tag to that and as well as um, Redshift object and a new material. This way you can keep things uh, completely procedural and it will tax your your PC uh, much more, but this way you have the option on always do the changes and make it procedural um, as you go. Um, the other thing I did is I went to the material um, and it felt um, like it's um, more like a gas type you know it was transparent so what i did i just take the basic material and take the water preset and put it in a material blender as a base color uh, i think the subsurface did it so the transmittance color was purple and and that's what made it um such a nice color so if, if i just turn this one off if i'm gonna go remove wire from that one. I just made it this purple liquid and that already looked cool by itself. But if we plug the material we created in the previous tutorial um, as a layer color one, and I'm just blending it with noise, I think I have done nothing to it. It immediately improved the look. So you're combining water with that um, milky coffee preset, um, the, the material we did before. So it immediately creates liquid like uh, much much better looking material and the other thing i wanted to mention is the xp flow field i i didn't touch on the explosive effects that i added so there's a layer random and you can add more layers uh, you know um, and I, I didn't do in the previous video the explosive effect so i've added that one uh, and that that one makes the flow a little bit different so that uh, helped a lot i will update this project file and upload it to gumroad just for for you guys so you can you can go over it uh, you can go over the changes you can see the xp shutter is completely editable so you can do anything to it as you go as you animate so and then you need to be careful when you cache so i'm gonna i'm gonna cache with you now i'm just gonna delete my uh cache and it's just gonna empty maybe delete delete is completely and the VDB measure is now reacting so if I'm if I'm gonna zoom out of this and turn off the measure so we have our rock scene I think I've animated the rock just going apart slowly so it's kind of opening as well uh, the other thing uh, that I noticed uh, on the texture of that rock uh, because I was using the new material preset um, it was the this mode uh, diffuse model the Lambertian spheres it's, it, it creates really if you if, if you zoom in it creates really sharp edges and 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 really contrasty you know crevices uh, so um, I think one of the things that, that could help uh, uh, I didn't test that properly yet but changing that displacement um, and making it less even less or maybe just getting rid of that completely should fix some of those issues as you can see the rock is now uh, much easier so maybe um, using that uh, Lambertian mode wasn't ideal for this kind of displacement um, on the rock uh, maybe it was too too sharp uh, so um, you can do that as well and just going back to uh, our particle effect so I'm gonna turn on the emitter again and turn on the XP flow field and turbulence 2 and I have the emitter come in on a frame 12 so I'm going to turn off the IPR and as you can see it's going like that so it's coming out of the rock but I have some of the particles coming through the rock so what might help uh, is to press ctrl D go into X particles and increase the subframe steps for the calculations and as well as uh, 
you know accuracy but then obviously you can do that uh, at, the, at the render time just uh, it will slow down things considerably so I think this is looking pretty good um, for what we want I'm already liking it um, so if you down if you did cache your animation uh, before uh, then you will need to look at this but then if you want to see how the process looks like I'm gonna just do it right now so uh, once I'm happy with the animation and it goes the way I like um, I can um, proceed and go to our VDB mesher you know the first you need to check your particles and then you need to check the mesher in a mesher um, there's importance of uh, inclusion of those filters. The Gaussian filter uh, needs to be turned on, use filter and median and Gaussian. You can combine these and you can um, add more filter uh, like a curvature. And this will affect the way your liquid is looking like. So you will then continue on your look development. Uh, I can now preview that. I'm just gonna make sure I'm in 1080, 1080. So this one gets completely covered here so uh, am I still gonna need to do some work on that and uh, by adding layers or deleting those like if I delete the Gaussian it will change uh, how the VDB uh, looks like and it's turning it back into those spheres like I show you in the previous video so uh, really those filters make a massive difference once you once you put them in um, they will make it liquid like and you can try on different on like a curvature I think I, I've tried before curvature but um, the more things you add in obviously you will you will feel it on your on your machine so okay I'm gonna stop this now and and zoom zoom in and look at it properly try IPR I really like how this looking and I'm gonna I'm going to yeah I'm going to I'm gonna cache this uh, even though there's still some some particles coming through so I can increase increase even further the accuracy to 20 and subframe steps to like six and then having it cached out so i'm just gonna press shift c and write xp cache and then go to inclusions i can turn off everything else off uh that i don't really need and i'm just gonna use open vdb so i'm just gonna cache that vdb and i'm gonna go here select my folder and it's going to be XP cache folder and then just proceed by building a cache. This will take a moment so I'll speed this up. Okay, so now we, we should have our animation cached out as well. I just had turn off my shutter, which I thought it's going to be a problem, but it looks like it wasn't. Now, this looks much better. Uh, I don't have many particles coming through the rock, so uh, that definitely improved. Um, it took overall six minutes, seven minutes uh, to cache this. Uh, four seconds of animation so if I just zoom out of this and then uh, turn off the emitter we don't need it anymore uh, we can turn off the dynamics turbulence so we have a rock opening and now it works quite fast which is great that's what we want so now I can play with the material uh, and I can develop this even further if I want to, but I'm pretty happy with where it is uh, right now. I, I don't know what kind of liquid is this. Um. The other thing you could do to speed things up, you could change your threshold. So normally I have my threshold like 0 0.01, but you can go to five and that would speed things up. Uh, so um, 
basically the renders would be noisy, the IPR would be faster. There's still calculation on X particle side, but uh, this way you you really have much faster feedback, even though it's not that high quality. But when you when you do the simulation, you more take care about shapes and and um, you don't you don't you don't care about final look. Um, so uh, I think that that will help. So redshift uh, threshold, change it to five. And then once you go render it back to zero, zero, one and uh, zero point zero one. And now uh, when I test things, um, you know, when I want to look at it, I turn off the IPR and I have the X particles running by itself. And I reduce, if I do control the subframe step to one, collision 200, iterations, accuracy to 3%, so very low. Um, I think default is 10%. So that, that helps uh, because, as you can see, it runs much faster, even though it's uh, coming through that rock. So it still has to calculate some collision. I have a collision tag on the wall and the floor as well. So that's some extra calculations. But like this... I can just, you know, let it like that. I can turn on the uh, VDB measure. So this way I can look at it, how it's going to look once it's uh, converted to mesh. And then I can play with my filters. Because if, if you do all those settings of all the fancy filters first, then you it will take ages before you get to this stage and you get to see the, the results. So I can turn on the IPR now and I can, I can look at the the result actually um, so this is quite crazy and then i can go actually to my vdb measure and i can play with this filter so i can have this offset filter and i can make it maybe strength um, 50 but yeah this will definitely help speed things up and once you go back to rendering just remember you go back to here and you you go increase your collision to 200 iterations to like six subframe steps to you can do six or even more accuracy can do 20 and this will slow things considerably but for render time and even for caching out it, it's it's fine you know you will cache out it will take seven minutes and and then you basically running on speed again just uh, for that look development it it really helps so yeah